avoiding office politics. This is one that probably has a bit of influence on a lot of people's lives, yet often won't recognise it. Um, I know in Carillion, one of the things they did when we have big contracts, we've got directors and stuff from different um, contracts in different countries, etc. They'll ask you what car you drive. The reason they do that is the cars are branded onto different pay grades. So you would know if you were a pay grade above them or not purely by the car they drive. So those silly, silly little games are what directors get up to because they want to see the guy they're working with if they're more important because they've got that pay grade. In Carillion, I would say forget all that crap because at the end of the day, a lot of people get jobs because of nepotism anyway, in my opinion. And I do stress it's my opinion. Um, but at the same time, don't get into it. And this is why I like being a contractor. None of that's my problem. I couldn't care less what they're doing. Um, in the same way where you get people doing stuff on purpose, like blocking you, buying and selling something if you're trading and stuff because they don't like you. Um, these sort of things do happen. I've also seen where people create issues in an office. Um, I know a few years back there's a somebody I know that was getting well bullied at work through emailing and stuff like that inside the same office um, to the point she left. Now the problem they had and I say they as in the company, is her, her boyfriend at the time was an IT manager. Not a IT manager, their IT manager. So he gave her a complete rundown of all their emails, the internal ones where they're actually talking about her as well as doing other stuff. And then she took that to a tribunal and they happily paid out quite a large sum of money. Um, the point being on that is you don't have to put up with the abuse. In that case, they think they could get away with it, and internally, they did get problems. The IT manager left at the same time, which is why the uh, data protection, all that stuff, wasn't really an issue, because they wanted to cover it up anyway, being a government body. Um, but anyway, if you're getting this sort of stuff going on at work, first thing I want to say is try and limit the information people have about you. One of the things you'll never see on my desk in an office is photos of the family and stuff. I mean, people will look for me on Facebook and that. Anyway, I get trolls. I get people like to say, oh, do you see this guy right about I says, yeah, read the rest of it. You'll see how crazy he is. And they'll go, yeah, I thought that. It just didn't make any sense. I was, that's why I was asking you about it. I says, well, you know. And then the thing is you get into a conversation about how it's very difficult to remove things from the internet. And, and the, the thing is they start to understand how much hassle these sort of things are but at the same time because you're so open and couldn't care less they understand it it's just complete nonsense but the the point being when you're getting into an office environment people are looking for stuff they want there's certain individuals in every office that will look to have gossip it doesn't matter if it's Dorian the cleaner or somebody that sat with only half a task a day to do. Um, so the rest of the time they're busy bothering other people. There is always somebody. Um, there's different reasons people do it, but ultimately, if you limit the information people have on you, it limits what they can say or do. It also, one of the things I try to do is limit my social time with people I work with on contracts. Now, I will deal with um, people that work with me closely, we'll go, we'll go out and have a, I mean, when I was over at Norwich, used to go lunch with uh, Jenna, they used to be do the administration. Um, but also, if there was like, like at the university, uh, there was a stag event in the afternoon uh, where they were going to the pub for lunch and then come back to work. I don't drink during the day and I'm not going to sit there on a, lemonade or something in the afternoon looking a bit sad in the pub. So it's quite simply, no, it's all right, guys, I'm not part of the, that little niche. You know, at the end of the day, I'm here as an external contractor. That's your thing. You know, these are your friends, not my friends. I'm not your friend. I'm just a contractor. Not because 
I hate you or something, but simply we do not engage in any other sense than business. So that is your social circle. Although I'm sat here, it doesn't mean I have to be obligated, and you are certainly not obligated to uh, tell me that you need to invite me to these things. It's your event. You know, these people around you have known you for years. I only turned up a couple of weeks ago. Don't worry about it. Um, and that's the reality. It may sound a bit strange to do that, but the reality is I'm not part of that company. I'm an external contractor. But that's one of the things I like about being external. You don't get tied into the politics. Um, I mean, there, there was a couple of incidents where you'll get people, well, I've had people trying to create issues within businesses, trying to re restrict access, uh, complaining to health and safety that your computer screen's not big enough, you need a keyboard, a bigger desk, all these silly little things. And then the health and safety goes, oh, well, you know, our company policy, and I just go, I'll stop you there. I don't work for you. And then that just throws a complete spanner in the words because they're like, we have no guidelines about what the contractors can do because they don't work for us. And then it's like, cannot compute. But the point being is you will get people stir the pot for whatever reason. A lot of time for me is because I'm trying to fix problems within a business and some of the problems are legacy problems because there's people in the business that create the problems or have been or they've been using the computer system the same way for the last 20 years. Why should it be any different tomorrow because I've actually changed something? That's just the way it happens. But the main thing is don't get caught up on it. Don't take none of it personally. Don't take anything um, on board that you don't need to. When somebody comes up to you and says, like, oh, do you know John's wife's having an affair with Tom down there or whatever? What I do with that sort of situation is I could turn around and say, that's none of your business and it's none of mine. Why are you gossiping about these people? And, and that would be the end of it. But what I try and do is turn around and go, you know what? I have... I have this report I need to get done by the end of today. Do you have such and such? And just change the conversation. Because you're just going, I'm not interested. But in a way that turns around and says, look, I'm far too busy. You know, it's that way they don't lose face and you're not getting involved in it. But office politics is one of those things that can be a big problem if you let them. Um, that's why my, my personal view is I try to avoid social and business. I do have a lot of friends that I deal with on a professional basis and with friends, but the majority of them, we don't spend time, family time, we don't have barbecues together or anything like that. What it is, is we'll talk about, oh, we went, you know, went out for dinner with the missus on the Friday, you know, it's an anniversary, that sort of stuff. Don't actually socialize with them. We socialize when we're working away in hotels, but that's just the guys working. We don't really get the families involved. We don't talk about each other. Um, and I think that's the best way a lot of the time. And then, like I said, you will get people try and drag you into this stuff. I remember years ago, uh, there was a company called Bromsgrove Window Films. Um, they, everybody there was related to each other. The, the owner was, um, this, the owner was married to this woman. And I'll say this woman because it gets complicated. We had a stepson who worked there, and then the cousin of the owner worked there. There's conflict between different members because they were sort of like different families within each other, and they were arguing all the time, but it's very snide and stuff sometimes. But the point I'm bringing up is just don't get into it. Just go, I don't want to know, whatever. You know, whatever you have to do, just say, look, you guys do what you want. I'm just here to do my job, and that's it. I don't want to know. Um, and the same way when people try to do stuff to you, I often would confront it. I remember back in, well, probably 97, Integral Services, when somebody would actually say something in the office regarding something on a contract and said, oh, Matt's done this, blah, blah, blah. And somebody in the office had called me up and said, Matt, this guy is saying this. And I says, that's not even my contract. And I just called the guy up and says, look, 
what, what's going on? Why are you telling people this is a problem on this and it's created by me? I said, I'm on my way to the office. I'll come and see you face to face about this. And confronting people can often get rid of it. But you have to gauge it. You know, in this case, this guy had been just trying to spread something for something he'd messed up. And as soon as he knew he was going to the office, I was going to the office to see him about it. He instantly retracted it and made everyone aware that the problem was his, not not mine. Because now everybody in the office was well aware that it was his problem because I wasn't even there. But these things happen. And a lot of time dealing with it works because it stops people letting it fester and then stirring it and keeping it going. But going in there and say, right, what's the problem? What's going on? You find a lot of time people just go silent. Thanks for watching.